Have you ever tried to make something beautiful in your yard? Like this rock path right here? If you have, then you know how frustrating it can be when moles come up and destroy it. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to make a rock path just like this that no mole can ever destroy. And in fact, it'll probably frustrate the moles. And nothing in my life would make me happier than to irritate a mole. Let's get started. I made this rock path and I, I wanted the rocks to be nice and clean and these are all hand-picked rocks because I collect rocks. I'm always picking up rocks at the beach and everywhere I go and I'm adding them to the path. Now what's happened is moles. Look at that. Moles have dug up and dirtied up my rocks and ruined my path. So I'm going to tear this whole thing out. We're going to do it right this time. Whatever that means. I haven't quite figured it out yet. And you know, once in a while I throw agates out here just to surprise people. Carnelian agate, why did I put that out there? God made moles for a reason, but I'm not sure what that reason is. By the way, if you need flagstone and you live in Vancouver, Washington, or if you need some of this rainbow rock or, or sand or whatever, uh, Sundance Rockery down on 18th Street uh, and 162nd, that's a great place to, to, to shop. I know the owner, he's, you know, he's okay. Just kidding, he's a, he's a great guy, he's a good friend of mine. So, uh, go down to Sundance Rockery and get your stuff. Uh, Look out, Calvin. Probably not the greatest idea with my sore back, but oh well. So one thing I've been doing is I've been going through all this rock and this this stuff I call I bought it, it was called Rainbow Rock. And I've been looking at like the good pieces and the bad pieces, and there are just a lot of bad pieces. And this is in general a problem with commercial rock products. If you go buy Rainbow Rock or something for a path or or river rock, you'll notice there's a lot of good rocks that are nice and hard, like jasper, and there might even be some ag and stuff in there. Stuff that's, you know, that's gonna last over time, something hard like that, good stuff. But then you'll also notice a lot of rocks that just kind of crumble away and have sharp, jagged edges and have cracked in half and things like that. And over time, rock beds can get messy. So, you know, that's why I, I'm trying to hand pick all my rocks. But anyway, what I'm doing now is I'm kind of going through this, this rainbow rock I bought and looking at it all and like, this is jagged, this is a jagged piece, you know. Um, this one's broken in half. This one's gonna hurt if somebody steps on it. So then I'm just going through and kind of picking out, oh, here's a nice smooth one, I'll, I'll keep that one. And I have a good good amount here. Uh, so this is gonna be nice high quality uh, rainbow rock, but always just look really carefully at what you're getting, uh, especially if you want it to be, to look good over time, right? I'm a little bit OCD. Okay, so here's what I've accomplished so far today. Got all my rock out of here and I collected quite a bit of the rainbow rock which I got in there see that's all good quality stuff next step is just manual labor here excavating this stuff okay so I've excavated this area down to the bottom of this board it's a two by four and then I bought this stuff here it's called hardware cloth I got it at Lowe's pretty cheap 20 bucks for a 10 feet by 36 inch, half inch mesh opening, galvanized. So, I, you know, I don't know how long that's gonna last underground, but it should last a few years, I would say. I, I don't know if it's meant for this application, but I hope it works. Anyway, I'm gonna lay this stuff down first. I'm gonna staple it to this board, so moles can't like come up in between it and the board, push it up. And then I'm gonna lay out this uh, landscape fabric here. I got the ultimate weed barrier. I didn't worry about getting this too level, by the way, either. I just eyed it right now because that doesn't really matter. Once I put the, the quarter minus in, I'll put a couple inches of quarter minus in, and that I want pretty level, right? And then I'll lay my flagstone in, and then I'll put all my decorative rock in. Now, I know what some of you might be thinking. This, you might be saying like, that's oh, this is overkill for a little rock path, Eric. Well, I guess I would say that's true if you don't have moles in your area. I'm not gonna let those little punks beat me. Okay, so my next step is to lay this stuff out. Put this down, like so. I don't want molds coming up in between the wood and the border here, so. Perfect. All right, if the molds can get through this stuff, then oh well, they win. Okay, now I'm gonna lay out my landscape fabric. I bought the good stuff. Might as well, it's only a few bucks more, right? 
30 year warranty compared to like a six year warranty. So now my next step is to go get some uh, quarter minus and dump it in here. But I gotta measure this area first to figure out exactly how much quarter minus I need. Okay, so I calculated 17 feet by three feet by three inches and I got about 0.47 of a yard. So I just got a half a yard. I might have a little extra, but that's fine. Here we go. Now the whole point of this quarter minus, when I say quarter minus, one fourth minus. That means this gravel has chunks up to a fourth inch wide and the rest of it is fine. So it'll pack really nicely. When it gets wet, it'll pack. The whole point of this is stability and the ability to level your stepping stones, right? And for me, I put an extra thick kind of layer in because I want to fight the moles too, right? I want this to pack down and I want moles to be able to penetrate it. So with the metal, the landscape fabric and this stuff, I'm really hoping I don't ever have a mold problem right on this path. And, and, and like I said, if you're going to build a rock path, even if you don't have a mold problem, you want your quarter minus or half minus or whatever you decide to use, uh, but you want those fines in it so that when it gets wet, it can really pack down hard. And, and, the, and, and you want to be able to put your flagstone in and be able to level it really easily. And that's the point of this. Okay, now I'm going to tamp this and rake it and get it ready to lay the flagstone down. Okay, to really keep this all clean, I kind of decided I want a border here. I have this uh, treated lumber that I was using for stakes. That's why they're cut like this. And uh, so I might just throw a couple of these here like this. Do I know what I'm doing? Absolutely not. Okay, I drove a couple pieces of foot long rebar in here just to help keep this stable it's not perfectly level i just eyed it i don't really care just want, kind of want the ends to be lined up this looks good here i'm going to tack this in on the end good enough good that ain't going anywhere the plan is to replace these kind of boring border rocks with prettier border rocks over time i just have to find them i do have some kind of pretty ones like this is a kind of a nice cool big hunk of jasper yeah that's a good spot for that one then this piece of jasper could come in here why don't we have this one be a corner piece like right here in the corner like right there you can see that a person could spend a lot of time puzzling this together but this is the part of the path building that I like, right? This is the fun part. So I'm not gonna record all this because it would take forever. Okay, as you can see, I have the border kind of done. I'll change it up over time, but there it is for now. The next job is cleaning off all this flagstone. So I actually have to thank the moles because they have encouraged me to do this correctly. We'll start out with this nice big guy here. There. And now, now this is the point of having the quarter minus, is that I can adjust the quarter minus under this rock to make it nice and stable. Okay, you can see I've changed things up already a little bit. Uh, changed the front stone there to three. Now I'm gonna take some time to kind of sprinkle these larger, uh, kind of medium-sized stones around in different spots. So let me give you a close-up of some of these when they're wet. All right? That's pretty neat. That's cool, right? The ladder is gonna go on this one. It's the biggest one I have. There's my progress for today. 
Tomorrow I'll come out here and finish this up. Okay, so the mole's got all my rock dirty. So I'm gonna throw that rock there. That's called rainbow rock. I'm gonna throw it in the wheelbarrow there, stir it around, and there are nice big cracks in the bottom of my wheelbarrow, so the water will drain out. So I'm gonna do that with all my rock. All right, there's the rainbow rock cleaned. Okay, batch number two. I got so many cool rocks. I mean, look at that. It's different, right? Even once in a while, I dump some agates out here. All right, I think that's enough purposeful placement. I'm going to just start filling in with the smaller rocks now. Okay, that's the rainbow rock. Start filling in with this rock now. Oh, this bucket is cracking to bits. I have filled the rock in here and I got it mostly filled in, but you can see some gravel in some spots like there. And, and so I still wanna get more rock in here. So I'm gonna keep collecting because I like to collect anyway. So I'll just keep collecting and dumping more rock in here until it's completely full. Who knows when that will be, but for now, at least I have a rock path that the moles can't get into and dirty up. Okay, I finally got this done. There is no way in heck the moles are getting through this path to mess it up again. I, got, I dug it out two or three inches. I got the hardware stuff. I got the landscape fabric. I got the quarter minus. If a mole breaks through that, hey, more power to him. That mole deserves to ruin my path. Anyway, subscribe please and you'll get more of these backyard videos. I'll be working on my pool more here and there and uh, and you can just see all the boring things I already have on my channel if you if you go back and look. I got a bamboo grove and all kinds of cool things. So I also post rock hunting videos now and again and you can see those. So uh, in fact I'm working on a new one. I just went up to uh, what was it Longview I think Kelso area and hunted for some carnelian agates. That was kind of fun. I don't usually hunt in the woods. So um, anyway I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned a lot about making a rock path. I don't really know what I'm doing. I just do it. So uh, hopefully I did it right. If you have any comments and you want to tell me anything I could have done better, uh, let me know. And uh, see you next time.